They say we'll never work the same way again. The pandemic has forced fed the workforce the idea of flexible working and now there's no looking back. My name is Frida Liu and today we'll discuss how work will look like in the future. We'll be discussing how to transition seamlessly into the hybrid workplace, how to realign culture, expectations and benefits and how you can make better career choices to ensure you or your company aren't left behind. So welcome, good afternoon, I'm Frida Liu again, once again, I'm joined today by Hetel Doshi of Osaic. Hi Frida, <laughs> thanks for having me. Oh, welcome, uh, Sharina and Jacob of KPMG. Hi. And Derek Toe of Wob. Yes, hi, hello. A regular, a, reg a lot of regulars uh, on, on BFM, so welcome again. Now, I'm going to have some instructions for you guys. I need you all to download Kahoot which is spelled K-A-H-O-O-T. Uh, it's available on the uh, Apple App Store and Google Play, and the pin is on the screen. The pin is 6976737, okay? We'll give you a few minutes to sign up. K-A-H-O-O-T, you should be able to see that on your screen. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll be conducting a poll first. Uh, the questions in the poll is how would you like to work in the future? We have three choices, which is remote working slash working from home, WFH. Uh, second option, back to the office, please. And uh, third option, hybrid sounds good to me. So what's going to happen is uh, we'll start the poll in a couple of minutes and we'll see what the results are at the end of the show uh, after our discussion today. We'll be also giving away some BFM merchandise later on. So again, a reminder, download the app and get yourself ready for our questions and the fastest two respondents at the end of the show will be getting some prizes. So yes, it's a hint for you to stay until then. Um, and if you have any questions to ask, please put them on our FB comments page and we'll attempt to address as many as possible. Okay, on to the show. There's no looking back. Work has changed for us forever, but what will it look like? They say the future is hybrid, right? So what's your vision for the hybrid workplace? So I'll ask Hetel first. Okay, um, so the vision is you know, probably a little bit of a prediction from the past. Uh, we started off as hunters and gatherers, moving into agricultural revolution, and then the industrial revolution. Back in those days, there was so much that we did already, even without the internet, and everything was done virtually. Things like, you know, creating our religions and making sure that it reached the masses, mm. for example. Uh, you know, there was a company called the Hudson Bay Company, I think sometime in the 1600s or so. For about 150 years, they traded between America and Europe without any internet whatsoever. Right. Right. Uh, people got married virtually back then as well. They lived separately. I think if there was so much that flourished back in the past without the internet, I am extremely hopeful. I think there's going to be perpetual possibilities for the future, uh, whether it is a hybrid or whether it is you know, you know, working in the office or not. So I think definitely loads of possibilities. I'm highly optimistic about the future. But I think one thing about the future that I would I would really hope for would be a disproportionate amount of practicalities, meaning just be a very, very practical about the things that are within our limits and with, you know, that is not within our limits, so that we don't burn ourselves out um, with this hopefulness that we have of the future. Yeah. Okay. So, so lovely so future, let's just be practical so we don't kill ourselves in the process. Okay, so very yeah. positive. Huh? Shamini, positive or not? Um, Okay, so I'm sometimes the glass is full, sometimes it's half empty sort of person. But at the end of the day, I think when you're thinking about organizations, where are they heading towards? A lot of them say um, they want a mixture. Right. You know, I like this whole concept of working from home or working from wherever. But at the same time, I want to see my people as well. You know, so the future for companies at least, uh, I would expect it to be a hybrid you know, and also looking at your organization, can you actually continue this whole work from home right. is the next quest. The first question that you need right. to ask actually, uh, is it realistic for my organization? Right. So once you answer that, then you can say, okay, my people want a hybrid, my people want this, my people want that. How can I help them? Okay. You know, so, so practicality first and then after that. What does that look for my okay, organization? Right. Uh, Derek? Yeah, so um, when, when I first started WOP many years ago, one of the 
sort of the vision that I saw sort of also shared with the team was, you know, I sort of hope that we one day become like a campus style where people can kind of yeah. come in and go out as they like, you know, and um, so it's in terms of it's like flexibility of time and flexibility of location, yeah. right? So, so one of the, the luxuries of being like a technology company is that you naturally are able to do this, but I'm sort of like going to the future, I'm hoping more and more companies attempt to do this sort of this hybrid kind of workplace for very practical reasons. So not just because I'm, I'm very idealistic about culture and all that, but when you are able to make this work, um, you get access to a lot more talent than you normally would, mm. right? Because now suddenly mm. you can hire someone that's in Malacca, in Johor, and they're not here, and, and, or maybe you can hire someone that has to use their day to maybe take care of the kids, and now you know, they can help out at different times. So um, definitely I see more and more companies approaching this. Uh, okay, so Shami, KPMG recently conducted, two days ago, yes. the CEO Outlook Health Survey. So what are the expectations among CEOs? Okay, so the majority of the CEOs do expect uh, their companies to go back to normal right. pre-COVID, okay. uh, which means going back to the office and so on. But a lot of them are also saying we're never going to be normal mm. pre-COVID. Okay, so s changes have to happen. What those changes are is the question that everyone is asking. So what works for your organization? There are a couple of things that the CEO say must happen. One is that whole social concept needs to change because no longer are you face to face. Uh, you are going to have, so even if an organization goes down the hybrid model, you're going to have some people that are sitting in the office, some people that are home. But that social element within the organization needs to continue. So right. what does that look like? How do you make sure that happens? The second part is the whole emotional connection. Um, I mean, Heathel, you maybe you want you may want to add on to this, you know, but then as far as the whole emotional connection is concerned, people have already started saying things like, I'm lonely. I only have my four walls. I don't have a cat or a dog. I don't have anyone to talk to. Even my teddy bear doesn't respond to me, right. you know. So what does that look like? How do we make sure that if we are continuing down this hybrid, mm. how do we make sure that our people are emotionally stable? Right. Mm. So yeah. I have an 18 year old son. He is in the house, but I don't see him. But anyway, <laughs> you want to you want to add on to to yeah. what uh, Shami has? Sure. I I think. Good news is that the teddy bear isn't talking to you yet. Yes. That's a very, very good news. <laughs> um, I would definitely agree with what Chamni is saying. With uh, a particular research that was done, just released uh, last year, which is really good because you want to be looking at research that's been done in pandemic times. The number one thing that is really, really being looked at right now is the concept of how do you create a social environment uh, on, on a virtual platform where you could be meeting each other or you couldn't be meeting each other. And also certain groups of people will be meeting each other more than other groups of people, creating this sense of maybe potential non-inclusion. So for example, the other day I have a management team, you've got the team A, team B, right? Mm. So you can see team A is already having like a certain click mm. and they're going to a particular restaurant mm. and they're having a certain type of food. Team B has a certain preference and then you can see this uh, small cracks beginning to happen because of the way that they are structured and this concept of they versus us or right. you versus me right. is starting to take place. Now the idea of fractures, which really, right. you know, if you look at it, it comes from the caste system of sorts, we won't go into that. This idea of fractures is a very important point to kind of look at first rather than the outcome, which is emotional disconnect or social disconnect. So where have the, where did it start? Uh, right. Which place did it start at and how is it kind of looking um, going forward? I think one thing that is really, really important would be as per what I've said earlier and totally agree with what uh, Derek has mentioned as well. Uh, you know, this is a new space. You can kind of play with it in any way possible, but you have to understand this concept of space. So this mm. is really quantum physics. So I highly recommend that everybody begins to read up a little bit more about quantum physics. For example, my dad would, you know, sometimes call my mom and my mom would be like, I knew that you were going to call me. Uh -huh. So there's this sense of telepathy and, um, you know, this energetic transference that you would get. Um, if you're really connected with each other, you would kind of be able to have all these sense and signals if you are in tune with it. 
So I would highly recommend that organizations or business leaders begin to learn a little bit about quantum physics. If you don't want to, then um, really start venturing in a space of energy because there is time, space and energy in this new dimension right. where we can't see each other but there is this invisible forces that connect us. Right. Uh, for those of you who don't believe in energy, you don't have to believe in it. You just have to understand that the whole world is a ball of energy. Right. It cannot be created, cannot be destroyed, but it's constantly transferring if you don't pay attention, but it will transform if you do pay attention to it. Um, so they are very small, easy, super simple, very powerful techniques that you can do even if you're not in the same space. And for this, you can ask people who've had long distance relationships. Although they didn't want to be in long-distance relationships, they would often say the relationship was a bit better long-distance. Then when they got together, they probably annoyed each other a bit more and then they needed a bit of space again. Mm. So I would definitely recommend that you read up as much as possible on the concept of quantum physics, which is all about energy times space dimensions. Mm. And how do you tap into energy by simply closing your eyes? It probably sounds a bit weird, but it's extremely powerful and we do it all the time, at Un least. Unknowingly. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. No, but it's very interesting you were talking about fragments, right, and how we got to be wary of it because right, right where we are working at BFM, we're also working in two teams. So I'm obviously always uh, you know, near Audrey and all that, but then how we have to communicate with the other team um, through other ways, but we don't get to see them. And, it, you know, and to be wary of these fragments, right? Now, Derek, I know you've got some slides to show, right? And uh, this is the uh, WOBS Annual Work Culture Survey for 2021 and the expectations of the younger generation, right? Uh, how many people were surveyed for this? And, you know, I guess uh, we'll go through the slides. So you got the first slide ready, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. so um, so we surveyed uh, a thousand, so there were 1,500 people who responded to this survey. Mm -hmm. And uh, our demographic is mainly uh, Gen, Gen Y, Gen Z, 90% uh, of the people responded uh, either were degree holder or, or pursuing a degree. So, so they're in that kind of space. Uh, and, and we, we made this, um, uh, we're very interested in this survey, especially this year because of the pandemic, right? Because uh, you, we have an entire, I suppose, um, uh, country of businesses sort of shocked into having to figure yes. out how to work remotely and everyone forced to, to adapt to this, right? So one of the first things that, you know, uh, so we started to ask was like, oh, would you allow to work remotely before? Uh, and about 29% of them said that they did. And then 71% uh, uh, said that um, they only started working remotely after, right, the mm -hmm. uh, MCO started. So I'm referring to the first MCO. This was like the March, one in March 2020, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, but now, even though SOPs have been relaxed, 73% uh, continue to work remotely. So you can see that, the, this sort of uh, hybrid or remote working culture uh, is uh, here to stay. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I think is very related to what we're just talking about now is we were also very curious, how did you feel during right. this time, right? Uh, and, and what did you have to go through? So 32% of the people surveyed- That's the second slide, yeah? Yes, okay. that's right. 32% uh, actually ha uh, said that they had to work more hours, right? Mm -hmm. So they actually worked longer hours. And from this 32%, uh, many of them reported uh, very negative sort of uh, feelings like 25% said they felt stressed, 18% felt they were anxious, 4% felt uh, angry, and 12% lonely, right? So, so this, they had a lot of like, negative uh, feelings. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, uh, we then compared to those who reported no change uh, in their working hours, or some of them even had to work less, you can see that it's almost the same in terms of their feelings. So, so definitely the ones, the people that had to work longer hours felt a lot more negative uh, emotions because of this, right? Um, then on the, so, on, uh, so in, in the next slide, right? So on the topic of like how they felt uh, this disconnection, uh, mm. right, with peers. Uh, so we're very curious about how this has changed. So 53% of our respondents actually said there was no change at, at all to their relationship with their peers, but 35% reported being disconnected. So that's quite a sizable group there. So a third, right? A third of people felt disconnected. 12% felt more connected. I'm not sure why. This is an interesting uh, stand, but 35% but disconnected, 12% more connected. And in the next slide, we also asked them what was your relationship like with your direct manager, right? So 53% reported no change. 25% actually felt they had more freedom, right? And another 22% felt that they were being monitored more closely. 
right? So if you so the the ones that felt that they were they had more freedom actually felt more positive emotions, and the ones that were monitored uh, more closely felt more negative emotions. I think one of the so this is just like a, a snippet from the report. We haven't uh, published the full report yet. You'll see in a couple of weeks. But one of the things I wanted to highlight from this is it's very uh, obvious that everyone is new to this. Right. Like companies don't know what to do. Right. That's why you see like there's more monitoring. There's a lot more anxiety. There's a lot of trust issues. And as a, as a country or as like people, we all have to try to figure this out. If this is going right. to be long term. Right. The implication yeah. could be long term. Yeah. All right. No, if you look at the, the survey though, now how is this, I guess, different from 2020? You know, pre COVID, were, were, were the behaviors uh, similar? You know, I mean, if we were to do a comparison. Yeah, so, so um, I uh, don't have a slide for this because the, the, the page isn't ready yet. But the one very obvious thing that we noticed right. was um, uh, in the past, a lot of our respondents actually uh, prioritized company culture over things like job stability. But that is sort of reversed right now right. after the pandemic. So most of them actually prioritize job stability over culture. Right. And, I, and I suppose that the reason for that is because, well, you need to feed yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about yeah. culture? Do I have a job? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, if I, if I can't buy food, like, I, I just yeah. need a job, right? So, so but, but I sort of think that uh, it, it probably will be a short-term thing mm. because obviously people mm. need to pay bills and all that, right? So one of the things I would tell a lot of employers is don't take this for granted though. Those sort, of, those sort of have this sort of mentality like, well, you're lucky you have a job so I can treat you any way I want. Because yeah. one day things will go back to normal, like yes. the market will be back to normal. And your employees will remember this, right? And they'll yes. leave you. So, yes. so a lot of companies, even though culture might not sound like you need to stress too much about it now because people need jobs anyway. You have to realize that it's short yeah. term, yeah. right? You need to figure this out long term. And I know that Shamini will go through what are some things that we can do a little yeah. later. Now, yeah. just looking at the people in the studio behind the scenes here, are you feeling lonely? Anyway, <laughs> okay. And hey, insecure. Insecure. <laughs> um, do we all need teddy bears? <laughs> so when you talk that don't talk back, <laughs> but don't talk back, but don't talk back. Now, when you look at the survey results, uh, Hetel, what are some of your considerations for organization from an organizational psychology point of view? Obviously. Okay. So, yeah. first things first. Um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs never got the validation that it required for hundreds of years <laughs> since the day that it was conceptualized. But in the past 20 years, there has been so much of research done to say that this is probably one of the most simplified and valid concepts. If right. you don't have your basic brass tags, security, roof over your head, food, if you don't have any of that, forget about the rest of life. Right. So this is very obvious that it is... Uh, a need it's not a want mm. uh, the second thing would be I would beg to differ to say that this is a short-term thing I think this is so from what our research shows when we did pre-COVID because we've been around for about at least 15 years now pre-COVID obviously never seen anything like this in our lives the, the top three fears were always fear of uncertainty fear of failure and fear of not being good enough which really makes sense right like mm. I don't know what my future is going to be I might fail and I'm not sure whether I'll ever really be able to survive that. Right. This didn't change during COVID at all. So in our survey, that fear didn't change. Yeah. Uh, my assumption would be that it's not going to change after this because the rate of change and the rate of uh, movement in that change is here to stay. Yeah. So I don't think security or that, that, you know, human beings just love certainty. If I go into a library, a library should look something like this. If right. I go into a bar, it should look something like this. Mm. But now this story is like a horror story that has no ending. Uh. But really, I think what needs to happen, not I think, in crisis, the first thing that needs to happen, the sooner you get to that state, the better, is acceptance. And I think most organizations just, or people, are hoping for so much in the future that they aren't just relaxing into this state to say, it's here. We don't know for how long, it doesn't matter. It's here, it's now, and I'm just going to make the best out of it for as long as I can. Because in the research that we've done as well, people who are critical, even in the good times, stay critical in the bad times, and then again the good times. Those who are grateful stay the same throughout as well. Mm. So I would highly recommend get into acceptance mode, let life happen, and turn it from a horror story into a thriller, 
and nobody nobody likes a friend who tells you the end of a thriller story right mm-hmm. like you hate that friend you would block the friend so just enjoy this element <laughs> that is unraveling let it surprise you a little and maybe also take part in that particular movement uh the third thing that i'd like to say so number one would be the element of needs versus wants the second thing would be acceptance post crisis cuz how long are we going to wait to we accept it and the third thing would definitely be around emotions are transient now i could be lonely the moment i pick up the phone i could feel a lot better with my life right so because it's transient don't worry too much about emotion based data use it as data from data move it into direct it into the state that you want it to be right. human beings are a lot easier to shift in our emotional states than we imagine right like just buy everyone a box of pizza on a friday there's a little <laughs> bit of a spike that goes up at least temporarily but of course you want to design it so that it has some kind of sustainability and over a period of time people can make predictions that this is how you are going to be treating me so definitely say yeah these these three things Uh, but yes, Derek, good job for doing evidence-based practices because we need a lot of Malaysian data. Yeah, we don't right. have enough of it. Yeah. So Friday pizza, uh, <laughs> always, always. <laughs> so any questions? Yes, please put your questions out on on the Facebook, and we'll we'll try to address them. So Shamini, uh, uh, KBMG also did the workplace of the future, right? Um, what will the workplace of the future look like? So um if you think about what it was pre covid mm. okay it was 100% on site for most companies uh when mco happened here in malaysia everyone had to rush within the 48 hours that the government gave us to sort out everything yeah. Yeah. sort out your laptop sort out your work from home and start working from home so there were a lot of things that needed to happen the other side of the scale was uh in in so in the survey that we did there were actually five stages starting off with traditional mm-hmm. and moving into pop up mixed professional and extreme so when mco started pop up a lot of pop ups happened uh some were already at the extreme stage right. where they already had everything that enabled their people to work from home right um now what does the future look like again it goes back to what does your organization doing how do your people work or how do your people need to work and what do your people want a combination of this will then decide what your future workplace looks like right. is it going back to traditional or are you going to the extreme right. where you don't see anyone right. or are you doing a hybrid right. which is somewhere in the middle in something very interesting from that presentation the implications of extreme virtual uh, uh working right mm-hmm. uh, can you uh, talk a little bit about that so um if you think about extreme working it means i basically sit at home but i'm working mm-hmm. i don't see anyone i don't meet with anyone in the office physically right but there's a lot of virtual meetings that i end up having to have there's a lot of uh phone conversations there's a lot of uh, going on teams going on zoom going on webex or whatever it is to do the necessary work that i have to complete um a lot of organizations cannot reach extreme okay okay what uh, to though yeah that's okay, the million okay. dollar question okay, you know I'll so get yeah okay. so so the and 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 honestly speaking the extreme will only work for certain organizations yeah the majority of us are going to somehow or other have to go with a hybrid mm. but what does that hybrid look like is for you as an organization to decide mm. and uh, there's a lot of things that come into play you know like what is what brings in the revenue mm. and who needs to be in office who can be outside of office and if you think about it everyone is talking about work from home versus working in the office but once we sort out covid you don't necessarily have to work from home right you can now go and sit in starbucks that has sometimes mm. really nice wifi it's a bit noisy mm. but you It's, can go yeah. you know you can go in there and have meetings or at least you're connected 
all right so what does that whole flexible working arrangements work look like in your organization the the extreme virtual i, I imagine this this geek working on programming anyway Derek, you're, 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 oh, you're Derek, speaking oh. of which speaking of speaking of which sorry i uh, no, I agree with Charmin. Yeah. So I think one of the biggest challenges is that it doesn't, uh, extreme sort of like uh, working styles um, doesn't suit different kinds of businesses and certain jobs. So, so for example, if, if you're, it's a very sim- too simplistic example, if you're a receptionist, you sort of have to be in yeah. the office, right? You know, so that's the nature of the job. So um, I guess a lot of companies will have to figure out what it means for them, how to work. But, I would imagine most companies would still, um, you won't really go back to normal, normal. Mm. Uh, most companies will sort of try to figure out how to, you know, have a bit more flexibility because now that everyone has tasted it for a year, you know it's possible already. Yeah, mm. yeah and it's not just a matter of having tasted it, right? What if another pandemic comes about? Yeah. That's right. right? Yeah. You just have to be prepared for another uh, another episode, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, Thanks a lot, Frida. Okay, hey, Tom. Something to think about on <laughs> yeah, this Friday evening for <laughs> yes, while we lock ourselves up at home. <laughs> so your your thoughts on on, on the, the extreme uh, work virtual working? Okay, so I'll just be completely honest. Yeah, there's so much wisdom in the name. The word extreme already gives my heart like. You know, just not the kind of palpitations. You know, the right, right kind of right, waves right. that I need to really enjoy that particular experience. Where, in fact, working from home in the past one year has been an absolute joy. I wouldn't call it an extreme right. uh, situation. So I think wisdom in a name is very important. Uh, how we call something, name something, uh, is quite important. Um, so the question about. So the question over here would right, be right. You know, when she, uh, Shami spoke about extreme virtual working, right? Yeah. Um, you know, how was that a positive thing? I guess if companies decide I to think adopt that, whether it's vicious or virtuous, again, is in the hands of the one making the energy come right, alive. Okay. Because you could have people within the same team. One would say this is horrible for me, and one would say that this is great for me. I think in this particular situation, the first thing that leaders or organizations or even you yourself as an individual is to take power back in our hands. Power would mean two things. Primarily, the first thing we need to do is hygiene. So like what Chamini was saying, right, like Wi-Fi. I think the first few mm. weeks, my Wi-Fi just wasn't working in, the op- in, the, in mm. a separate room that I have. So I had to sit in the kitchen table. Uh, for some people, hygiene, you know, such as I think one of the moments where I, definitely teared and I think a lot of us teared was when we saw a client of us sitting in the car because she had to escape the kids in the house and then another one sitting in the toilet so I think hygiene factors primarily number one keep keep make sure that everybody has a safe space Mm. and a a, a space that works in your favor Uh, I think organizations like I won't and I can't mention it, but there are certain organizations that have already given a budget for you to make sure that you have good Wi-Fi connections. There is a client that I know who has given out everybody a thousand ringgit to get like the best chair in the world for yourself because you're going to be sitting there for hours to end. Yeah, that's really nice. And then the companies were like, okay, Friday pizzas are still on. We used to have it in the workplace. But so the hygiene element of keeping it a psychologically, emotionally, physically safe space to work will be very good. Uh, there's a client that we work with that has uh, that follows Australian standards, which means your place needs to wherever you're working in your house needs to meet certain ergonomical standards. Right. So it has to pass to every single employee's space needs to pass ergonomical standards, uh, which is f- phenomenal, right? right. I, mean, I think it's phenomenal. Right. That's one part, and then the tertiary part, like the secondary part, would be okay. Yeah, even if it's an extreme environment, whatever it is, you keep the hygiene clean. But the second part is creating exactly like what Chavani says, that social connection of sorts mm. where energetically we feel like we are still one mm. and that we can be there for each other and support each other. And for that, I think organizations are doing very well providing you know, certain EAPs and resilience programs, whatever not. This particular research that we have looked into that has also been released very recently in the past one year was looking at an integrated model that can really, really create a rich experience no matter where you are right. and that actually states the three things that are very important exist even if you're in a physical setup right so number one 
coordination means you need to talk to each other and understand how things are coordinated the second thing would be communication for example if employees are saying i need money i don't care about culture give them money don't try to fix the culture and invest in culture communication and having that organizational flow of messages and the third thing is relationship building the only difference in virtual teams that they are propagating in this particular model is that you need to do it a lot more before a project starts right so previously we had the luxury to go makan makan later on but now they are saying you have to do it prior the launch of any kind of projects or initiatives really take like at least half a day to a day for everybody to integrate that's the only major difference and what they're saying is that you measure that on an index called media richness meaning you test it out if everybody is in a physical space how rich is the conversation if they are in a virtual space how rich is that conversation and you begin to up the ante on either coordination communication on relationship so that the richness is still experienced right if that makes sense right okay um i'm going to go through some slides with uh, with shamini right and i definitely i'm just mindful of time but definitely what can companies do to innovate and how can teams be structured effectively that's crucial so maybe we'll start with how can companies collaborate to innovate i think that's okay. that's an important one okay so when you're thinking so taking on from what hetel was saying just now Am I pronouncing your name? Hato. Yeah. Hato. Hato. Okay, yeah. sorry. I'm not okay. learning all this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So, okay, so like what you were saying, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, companies need to collaborate. Okay? And what does that mean basically? You are not going to find the right mix in your first round. So, what you then end up needing to do is you need to observe, as you said, people need to see what's happening why understand why is it happening by questioning what is happening then you need to start associating yourself with what can change okay so now what does that look like for me in my organization i know this is the problem i i have some questions for it i've answered those questions let's associate ourselves with that model let's try out this model by experimenting on it once i've experimented on it i then have some minor fixes here and there or it's totally not working i need to go back to the observation part okay so you keep doing this until you reach a point where this model works for my organization i can start networking it out to everyone else and then you it's again not going to be a 100% fix there's still minor tweaks that need mm. to happen you know and that's where that iterations need to happen that minor fix okay i need to tweak a little bit here as you said you know i need to tweak this i need to tweak that how does that look for my organization so again it's we've had about more than a year now of mco cmco or mco so you've already started those iterations you've already started those observations on what works for your organization and what doesn't mm. okay so if you decide now this whole flexible working arrangements need to continue in my organization you already have an idea of what works in your organization so what then becomes your norm moving forward mm -hmm. right and the second question you need to ask is is this norm for everybody in the organization mm -hmm. or am i going to have different norms for different groups within my organization you know as you said a receptionist has to be in the office right all right but is there another way of doing it we don't know yet because no one's tried it out that's right yeah. yeah okay so if someone says well i don't need an office anymore but i still need a receptionist so what does that new receptionist role look like mm. okay and again it's not going to work for all organizations but it may work for your organization mm -hmm. i think one of the fatal things a lot of companies do is they go into the world saying i want to be like this organization yeah. i love the culture in this organization and therefore i want to follow it you are not that organization no. you need to create your own culture you need to create your own way of working right and what does that look like you take a little bit from here you take a little bit from there mm -hmm. and that's what becomes your working mm -hmm. environment okay so that's companies mm -hmm. what about teams right how can you plan to restructure teams? yes so taking on from the company 
it stems from teams. Right. Okay. Uh, I'll use KPMG as an example. We've got audit, tax, and advisory. To say that we are different is the understatement of the century. Okay. If you walk into the audit uh, floor, they have their own culture. If you walk into the tax floor, they have yeah. their own culture. If you walk into the advisory Advisory. floor, yeah. we have our own culture as well. Mm. Now, is one culture better than the other? No. Mm. It works for audit, it works for advisory, it works for tax. Mm. Okay. Now, overarching all of this is KPMG's values. So, we've got a set of things that we all practice, but underneath that umbrella, there's a little bit of tweaks that we have done because of the nature of our job. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so. okay, I'm going to move on. I'm going to uh, not talk about enterprise. I'm going to move on to your uh, HR Pulse survey. Right? Okay. Um, and hey, no, let me get my page out first. <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh, how will HR need to evolve? I think yes. that's also important. Okay. How will HR need to evolve, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so HR, traditional HR, Okay, you're talking about 15, 20 years ago. Traditional HR was mainly payroll and, yeah. and benefits. Comms and bends. Comms and bends, yeah. you know, making sure people got their salary at the end of the day. Uh, that has now evolved, obviously, a lot to what's known as HR business partners, where they are there sitting next to the business, uh, making sure that the business gets what they need and so on. Now, uh, that still remains the same. I still, as HR, I still need to make sure that the organization needs are fulfilled. Right. The only difference now is it's a virtual concept. All right? And moving forward, it's going into this hybrid. Right. So the first thing I need to continue doing, obviously, is delivering on the agenda for this whole transformation. All right? I need to make sure that the business goals, the business strategies are still met. Yeah. Um, how? By making sure that my workforce is ready, mm. okay, upskilling, reskilling, bringing in new people. What does that look like for my organization? Mm. First thing HR needs to do. Second thing, once I've gotten the right people, I've upskilled or reskilled or brought in whomever is needed. I need to now monitor to make sure that productivity is at its top, okay. Uh, what does that look like? Obviously, you've got like your KPIs and so on, but KPIs are one part of it. There's that whole social element that also needs to come in. How does HR monitor that part of it? You know, so I, I always tell people there's a technical aspect and there's a behavioral aspect. I may be the best person, I may be the top of my university, but if I do not have the right attitude, the right behavior, the right whatever mm-hmm. from a uh, soft skills I'm never going to amount to anything right you know you may find bodies strewn behind me right you know and I'm not going to progress that much mm-hmm. so how does HR make sure that mix of uh, technical and behavioral comes into play third element is uh, talking about have I got the right people now as well as in the future okay Okay, so no longer can HR say okay you needed 10 people I've given you the 10 people Mm. now go and work Mm. okay those 10 people may be relevant now but moving forward I need 15 people what is the mix is it the same 10 people do I need to think about reskilling upskilling Mm. do I need to think of new behaviors that need to come in for the 10 plus the additional five that need to come in what does my future look like so Mm. no longer can I say okay I need them in 2022 so I will start looking for them in 2021 you need to start thinking about the future now right all right so then there's also the whole um, so previously it was baby boomers gen y gen x uh, millennials and so on that's all we had to worry about yeah Now, I also have to worry about this whole flexible working arrangement. Mm. So, um, last year, KPMG actually did a public survey Mm. where they asked people, so, what's happening in your life now that COVID has happened? What are your concerns? The older generation, or maybe I should say the more experienced people, whatever you want to call them, the 
age mm-hmm. groups that are closer to me mm-hmm. okay we had concerns around the whole technic technology okay the younger generations the ones that have just started into the workforce they were more concerned about oh my wifi is not stable enough i need money for as you said you know i need money for wifi my data is not enough my this uh, i am actually enjoying working from home because i can now chat with my friends more i've got all these uh, i've got one chap in my team who works from 8:30 to 5:30 and then from 5:30 to 3 o'clock in the morning is on his dota right you know so i'm looking at him and i'm going when are you sleeping karla in between yeah. you know so he he so he was so happy with this whole work from home okay now yeah. he's going uh, maybe i need to socialize a bit more <laughs> but yeah you know there are people like that so how does hr then help that whole employee engagement make sure that employee engagement the proposition is still there mm-hmm. and the last one is behavioral science right mm-hmm. okay how do i keep my people motivated and engaged at the end of the day mm. okay uh derek any thoughts around this uh yeah so definitely uh <laughs> 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 no I, i i mean i mean it's right I mean, that there, there's a, a lot that hr has to do now to sort right. adapt to this like, right and i think yeah. it's pretty much covered okay okay, okay. Yeah. she's covered it yeah, okay covered. <laughs> any questions uh, from the floor no questions on the floor okay or oh, we're going to get that later now i'm going to ask uh, uh, one last question to hater before we get to the poll results right uh uncertainty and change i know you've talked about it right but what's um you it will make people uncomfortable and i think people are still uncomfortable so what's the best policy here for undertaking this inevitable changes in organization apart from understanding the quantum physics and <laughs> <laughs> uh so the question was what policy changes yeah what just yeah. you know yeah i don't think any policy changes are required at this stage because we still don't understand what really is going on maybe what i would definitely say is um from from what we have been doing and from what we really understand there is a system of organisms right that are working in a new concept of space and time mm. and we just really deeply need to understand this system as a new organism through data evidence and allow that organism to make decisions about how it's going to thrive in this environment which means it's no longer a committee that leads the organism but the community that kind of drives it right. and i think we've been talking about this concept of empowerment flexibility forever mm. this is again a new opportunity to make sure that we deeply understand stop listening to all the noise about what's going on totally agree stop listening to all these favorites out there of extreme what places second thing is let the organism speak to you it's like watering a plant or taking care of a garden the plants will tell you uh, and the third thing is when they tell you listen and eradicate the pain right because they are telling you that they are growing and that they have growth pains but if you're not listening to their growth pains they will never be able to grow mm. so eradicate this pain because this child is 2 years old we're hitting terrible twos mm. you just need to listen soon it will become a teenager it will have hormonal issues mm. or imbalances so just listen 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 mm. all right okay thank you guys uh, we we got you not the end of it yet we're going to look at the 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 kahoot results based on the poll right so diane has the figures uh, it says 50% wants hybrid workplaces and 40% says work remote so nobody wants to go back to the office <laughs> 10% wants to quit the job but that was that was and it's not saying anything you know uh so surprise are you surprised with that those results no, no no i think i think uh at the end of the day uh, a lot of like i said you know a lot of people are enjoying their yeah. work from home they feel uh over the last one year they have actually adjusted well and they have come up with their own rhythm So now the thought of actually going back to work mm. uh is is unconceivable for them. Right. Uh I will use me as an example. I had to be here by 12 o'clock today. Yeah. 
I left home at 10 o'clock right. and I was stuck in a jam. Uh, and I am so not looking forward to it. Right. Okay. The jam was caused by a roadblock, but that's a secondary issue. Right. You know, but at the end of the day, for the last one and a half years or one year yeah. plus, I've not been stuck in a jam. Right. And to have the thought of going back into this jam is ridiculous. And I'm from Klang. Oh. So whether you like it or not, when I exit Daman Sarato, that's it. I am going to have to sit in a jam for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, right. So nobody's surprised the results. Okay, we've got a, uh, well, there's, a, there's a competition right now. There is a Kahoot game. You're definitely still on Kahoot. K-H-O-O-T, right? The code is 6976737. I think you can see that on your screen. There are two questions, right? And you can answer that. Uh, the first question is, who are the panelists on the show today? Panelists, uh, not the one talking. Uh. So the panelists is, is it uh, Hetel, Dosh, Hetel, Shamini, Derek? Option B, is it Hetel, Frida, Derek? Option three is Frida, Shamini, Derek. Hello, if you've been paying attention. The second question is, what is the BFM <laughs> website? Is it bfm.com, bfm.my, bfm.org, bfm.edu? So, okay. Um, and you know, before we get to the results, right, any concluding remarks about today's session? Y yeah, so I think one, one of the things um, as to, uh, you know, what Shamin shared in terms of his slides and how he has to do it, that um, I sort of see it as the whole working from home or working remotely issue, you could sort of narrow it down to like a communication problem, if right. you like. So that's the right. main thing that's changed, right. how people communicate. So, um, you know, you're right, we have to sort of iterate and learn as we go, right? But right. even as a company right now in Guam, we are learning about this whole communication thing. So for example, what can be just discussed over text message? What, can, what should be discussed over a call? What should be discussed over a Zoom call? And what should be discussed in person? Like it's an entire right. learning process over right. a year. And, and, it, and so from my sort of like little experience we have, I think it has to do a bit with the complexity of the problem that right. you're trying to solve, along with how many people you need to get involved in solving this problem. So we, we, are, we are learning a lot. Like so we had issues where we tried to solve a complex problem over text message and people mm. start misunderstanding each other and you know, it got very messy. So I think, this, I think this is one of the key things that organizations need to try to resolve. Because that one sentence you read in different tones could mean different things. That's right. Yeah. right? And now you're saying in one tone, someone's listening in their head in another tone. That's so right, that, okay. yeah. So just that communication, uh, how you're communicating, um, that, that sort of thing, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Um, Shamini, any? I would uh, say communication, but also trust is going to be key. If you do not trust your people, if you do not, if you have not already started learning to trust your people, this whole remote working is never going to work in your organization. Right. I, I think uh, you mentioned it just now. You know where the people are saying that they are. Or I think maybe it was you. Mm -hmm. I, I, under pressure of being monitored yep. more. Okay, mm -hmm. it would suggest there's a level of mistrust in the organization. You need to address the tr trust issue, otherwise, it's never going to work. Okay, before you give the concluding remarks, we do have a question here from Sharon Duraraj. She said, uh, can you share some insights into changes in performance management in a hybrid work arrangement? This seems like a KPMG kind of question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, performance monitoring. At the end of the day, your KPIs need to be there. That is key. Yep. And you also must have a really, really, really good performance monitoring tool. Uh, no longer can you depend on a spreadsheet. Okay. It needs to be something that is real time. Right. Uh, your bosses, the leadership in your team needs to make sure that there are dashboards that they can check. Right. And again, it needs to be suited to your work environment. Right. It's very different, right? I mean, yes. for, for us working in radio and all that's very different. Yeah. Um, okay. If any comments to that question, and also, I guess, concluding remarks. There's so much about performance management system. I reckon we do another whole series on that. Uh, so I won't take that one on right now. Okay. I think this is a very magical time. Mm. And we may never see anything like this ever again. So I think in concluding, as a concluding remark, create the best experience of your life. Before you know it, it's going to be some other drama. <laughs> and then some other drama and really a believer of death because that's the only guarantee 
you don't want to you don't want to die saying that I've wasted three hours of my life worrying about whether I should work from home or work right, in the right. office or just have loads of fun and create the best experiences uh, and I think that if you have that kind of a spirit in you it doesn't even matter what you're going through in your life yeah so keep that I think keep that spirit and don't listen to too much of uh, noise around around you don't listen to too many people like us as well okay. no do 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 so, so we started on a positive no we're also ending on a positive always note. okay always. Uh, the winners okay for the for the competition we have TSE and Gina uh, please DM us uh, and then we'll be in touch with you to so you can collect your prizes uh, we'll work out a way we can collect the prizes safely um, anyway thank you again Shamina, Shamini Derek Hato and thank you all for joining us here on uh, BFM and with that, we say bye-bye.